Ahem. I hereby declare this chair the sole property of Garfield the cat. Move it, Garfield. That's my chair. 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 My cushion. Ladies and gentlemen, Garfield and friends. Friends are there. To help you get started, to give you a push on your way. Friends are there. To turn you around, get your feet on the ground for a brand new day. They'll pick you up when you're down. Help you swallow oh. your pride when something inside's got to break on through to the other side. Friends are someone you can open up to When you feel like you're ready to flip When you've got the world on your shoulder Friends are there to give you a tip Friends are there when you need them They're even there when you want For a walk in the park, for a shot in the dark Friends are there I don't care But friends will care This offer void where prohibited. Some restrictions may apply. Batteries not included. <sighs> oh, what a nightmare. I dreamed I had 300 cheeseburgers and no ketchup. What could be worse? All right, 400 cheeseburgers and no ketchup. Hmm. I hope John has breakfast ready. Gee, the place looks different. He's been rearranging furniture again. The phaser alert is code alpha. John's dressing even worse than usual. Attention, Zorborg. This is Star Wolf at Beta Base. You read me. Come in, Zorborg. Read you, Star Wolf. The motor rods are attacking Zen 2. Deploy all forces for maximum assault. What's going on here? That's not John. Could it be? Star Wolf to Rainbow Squadron. Star Wolf to Rainbow Squadron. Motor Rob attack. Code 2. Yes. I'm... I'm in the wrong cartoon. What in the heck is this? It's small orange and has enormous eyes. Excuse me, I seem to have made a wrong turn and wound up on some other show. My name's Gar... It must be a mutant gnome from the galaxy of rock. Come to spy on us. No, actually, I'm a cat. So, you want the energy jewel of Wizzig, do you? No, but if you have, like, a bacon, lettuce, and tomato on rye toast... I'll immobilize him with a polar laser orbitron. Hey! Jeez, if you don't have a BLT, just say so. <laughs> the mutant gnome flees. After him, he'll not escape. Help! Someone! I'm in the wrong cartoon! Odie! Odie, where are you? Hey, you're not Odie. Boy, you're extremely not Odie. This is a misunderstanding. You see, I'm not supposed to be in this cartoon. The mutant gnome is attempting to steal the power pod! Hey, a candy machine. Maybe I can get some sugar-free lasagna-flavored super bubblegum. The mutant has decoded the retro-firing pattern! He's stealing the power pod for the motor rods! Whoa! This is like John on the freeway. Only slower. Star Wolf to Zorborg. A spy for the motor rods has made off with the power pod. That is dire news, Star Wolf. The motor rods are attacking us already. If the power pod links up with their leader, they will be unstoppable. One of these buttons must stop it. Tune in cable TV, at least. Look, the power pod is linking up to complete the might of the motor rods. We are doomed. Well, at least he's got a good head on his shoulders. Stop.
Aha! Garfield says, stand on one leg. Garfield says, cluck like a chicken. I get it. This is one of those giant robots that turns into other things. Let's see what this does. Back to my own cartoon with John and Odie and Nermal. Even Nermal. The giant robots are gone. And the monsters. I'm not in that awful cartoon anymore. I'm... Oh no, I'm in the wrong cartoon again. Who are you? We're the cute creatures of the forest, and we're going to teach you how to be nice to everyone and never ever be mean. Giant robots. I want the giant robots back. <laughs> This is the story of Little Bo Peep, who lost her sheep. Hey, wait a minute. It would be more fun if we dressed up and acted it out. Great idea, Larson. There. Uh, we'll be the sheep, and now all we need is a Little Bo Peep. I don't like the sound of this. Come here, sheep! Bo Peep wants to brain you! Like, she's not a very nice lady, man. Guess you can't believe everything you read. <laughs> oh, panic! Oh, jeopardy! Oh, double jeopardy! Oh, final jeopardy! <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, Wade, what is it this time? Uh, this has been a test of the emergency duck casting system. <laughs> I am trying to put my books back on the shelves. I, I can never find one when I need it. Hey, Orson's putting all his books away. <laughs> That'll take a while. No way, no chance, no how. You know Orson, he can't put a book away without reading it first. He'll never get them put away. If Orson says he's putting them away, he's putting them away. Like I said, no chance. I'll bet you a month's chores he can't do it. <laughs> You're on! Hear that, Wade? Roy's gonna do all our chores for a month. <laughs> How sporting of the rooster. I just have to make sure Orson doesn't get his books put away. <laughs> The Adventures of the Scarlet Pimpernel. I love this book. I can't put it away yet. Indeed, you just said the beautiful Countess, fanning herself. The people will never allow you to confiscate their land. The Duc de doodle -Doo never jests, Countess. As for those peasants... You know what I mean. He says, you are a pig of a dog of a snake, Duke de Doodle-Doo. Let them eat the cake. 
Not while the Scarlet Pimpernel lives. Duke the Doodle, I have come to put a stop to your evil deeds. Le Scarlet Pimpernel. Huzzah! The Scarlet Pimpernel, I have been wanting to meet you. Take that. <laughs> what is a Pimpernel, anyway? You challenge me to a duel, Duke? The Scarlet Pimpernel is the flower of freedom, the red rose which stands for justice and the rights of the people, villain. Accept this as a token of my regard, Countess. Hunger! Time to get this over with. Oh, ow, oh, ah, oh, 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 I knew it. Orson can't pick up a book without reading it. That's why he never gets them put away. But to make sure that I win my bet, I'll just slip a few of my library books into the stack. <sighs> oh, I'll have to finish this later. Back to work. Daily life in the Stone Age. Whoa. He put some new books on Orson's pile. That rooster's a foul foul. He's stacking the odds in his favor in order to win the bet. Why don't I remember this book? Most of the average Stone Age person's day was spent searching for food. Competition for survival was keen, so people banded together in tribes to help each other. Anybody find food yet? Uh, nothing. Why can't we go to the supermarket? They haven't been imprinted yet. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Oh, I found some rocks. Oh, boy. Hungry. Cook dinner. Good idea. Me like barbecue. <laughs> Boy, this heart. Someone got match? They haven't been invented yet. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, what if the fire attracts a fearsome prehistoric type monster, huh? Oh, what are chances of that happening? Oh, pretty good, I'd say. <laughs> Wait a minute. Dinosaurs didn't exist at the same time as cave people. They didn't? Are you sure? It's right here in this book. Oh, my fancy bed. This is an interesting book. I wonder where I got it. No wonder Orson never gets his books put away. We forgot what an active imagination he has got. Roy knew it. That's why he made the bet with me. Looks like you'll be doing his chores for a month. Not me. Two can play at this game. <laughs> well, I'll put another book away. Ahem. Aren't you going to take a look at the book before you put it away? If I keep doing that, I'll never get all these put away. Oh, go ahead. One peek can't hurt. <sighs> How to be a librarian. What? A good librarian puts every book in its place right away. Yeah. I don't understand. Looks like we win, Roy. Here's a list of my chores for you to do. You can start sweeping up. Here's my list. Lots of a raking. Raking to do, Roy? Well, reading a book can make the time go faster. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, 
the galley slaves continued to row the ship onward. Row faster, all of you! Thanks, Orson. Neighbor kids don't spot us. Hey, cat! Give us a kitten and we'll let you live! Haha, -ha, not a chance, you turkeys! It's all for one and one more! <laughs> oh? Cousin Egbert, this is your cousin John. Say, I have to go out of town on business, and I was wondering if you'd take care of my cat. Hello? Hello? Well, that's my last relative to call. I guess I'll have to put Garfield and Odie in a pet hotel. Garfield won't object to that too much. No, 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 absolutely not. No way. No chance. Gee, he took it better than I thought he would. Garfield, be reasonable. Why should I start now? I can't leave you and Odie alone for two weeks, and I can't take you with me. Need a place for your pet to stay? Then come down to Howie's Housebreak Hotel, where we pamper your poodles and primp your pussy cats. At Housebreak Hotel, your pet will get spoiled rotten, whether it's lounging by our pool being fed in our sumptuous gourmet dining room, or snacking between meals on all the lasagna you can eat. Gee, Garfield, does does that sound like a place you'd like to stay? Come on, let's go. Move it. What are you waiting for? You came to the right place, Mr. Arbuckle. Garfield and Odie will be very happy here. I'm sure they will, but this place looks kind of expensive. <laughs> Relax, Mr. Arbuckle. Housebreak Hotel is the best. And your pets deserve the very best. I like that guy. He talks sense. Well, guess I'll get started with the important stuff. There you go. I'll pick them up in two weeks. Front, show our new guests to their private suite. <sighs> I'll have breakfast in bed and all the other meals. See you in two weeks, guys. No, I'll have brunch by the pool. But have the pool drained first and filled with ginger ale. No way, that's silly, filling the pool with ginger ale. Make a cherry cola. I wonder if this room has a view. Gee, I was hoping for the presidential suite. Let me out of here. This isn't a room. This is a dump. It isn't even sanitized for my protection. Quiet, cat, or we'll stick you in a worse room. There's a worse room than this? How? Is it on fire? Mealtime. Oh, I hope they serve pasta or maybe prime rib or chow mein or all of the above. <laughs> What is that? Trust me, you don't want to know. Oh. Be careful, some of that's getting into your mouth. Oh, I'm not going to take this. I'm going to protest. What's the worst they can do to me? Serve seconds. <clears throat> I would like to register a complaint about the cuisine. Now, I have a few numbers here of pizza places that deliver fast. Eat your dinner, cat. I refuse to eat this. You know, it's the first time I ever said that. Won't eat, huh? Okay, guys. No, stop. Cruel and unusual nourishment. That's awful, horrible. Maybe with a little ketchup. No TV, no fluffy pillow, no microwave, no TV. I said TV. I gotta make a break for it. Hey, what's all that noise? 
sounds of illness. Oh, I am not a well feline. <laughs> Medic! Come on, cat, snap out of it. Bon appetit! Yuck! And away we go. Oh, that stuff is terrible. All of you, come back here. Step right this way, everybody out. I gotta get out of here myself. Yes, I'm going to rescue Odie too. Hey, find that cat. Get him. At least nothing else can go wrong here. Hey, stop. Back in your cage. Get you out of here, Odie. This place is a prison. They keep us in little cages. And what do you think of that food? You'd think with a tongue like that, he'd have a little taste. Housebreak Hotel. What? You're coming to pick your cat up. Please hold. Housebreak Hotel. Your cat? Well, he got away. What do you mean you're going to sue me? Housebreak Hotel. Your cat? Whoa, whoa. There he is. The cat who ruined my business. I'll get you for this. Please, cat, leave me alone. Go away, I'm ruined. What did it take to go away and leave me alone, huh? Excuse me, I went to pick my cat and dog up at the pet hotel, and I was told they were here. Room 1708. Room service. Garfield, you can't stay here. Do you realize what a room like this costs? Bill to Howie's Housebreak Hotel? Hey, this is great! You sure you don't have to go out of town again? <laughs>